Y'all, you are in for a great episode today, y'all. These are some of our favorite comforting keto meals. We've taken meals that are family favorites and ketofied them in a way that my kids and my husband and my family all still crave it and eat every bite. Y'all, you're going to love this stuff. Hey y'all, hey, Eric with Time to Shrink. Welcome to the channel. Today we are gonna do a what's for dinner video and it's gonna be an extra special one because it's a collaboration with my friend Janet from the channel Janet Greta. She is relatively new here on YouTube and I am just really enjoying her and I just really wanted to share her with y'all. So I'm gonna let her introduce herself real quick and then we'll jump right into our video. Hi everyone, I'm Janet and I've lost 107 pounds on the keto diet and I'm so grateful to be here doing a collab with Erica from Time to Shrink. After losing 107 pounds, I finally got the confidence to start my own YouTube channel in September of 2020. I post three times a week, usually keto prepping meals, keto meal ideas and what I eat in a day mixed with some vlogs in there as well too. So make sure you come over and subscribe to my channel. Erica will have the link listed down below in her description box and we will see you guys soon. All right y'all, so that was Janet. She is super, super sweet. She has such a great story and I love watching her journey. I hope you will go over when this video is over and watch her video, watch her what's for dinner. I'll have her link down below and go give her some support. Let her know that Erica sent you and check her out, maybe even subscribe. All right, let's jump into what's for dinner this week. Y'all, for dinner tonight, we are going to do two ham casseroles. One is gonna be keto and one is gonna be non-keto. I'm gonna make it exactly the same way, but we're gonna make one with cauliflower rice and one we're gonna make with hash browns. I made a big, big ham in the crock pot over the weekend and we had a meal really two meals of just ham and side vegetables or whatever and rice and now i'm going to do some ham casserole and then i am also going to make some ham salad so today is going to be full of ham stuff <laughs> ham stuff today is going to be very hammy First, we're gonna make ham salad. I am going to use my food processor and I usually use dill pickle relish, but I did not have any on this day. So first I just pulse some pickles and then you add in about a fourth a cup of mayonnaise. I happen to have this Duke sandwich relish, so I am just gonna use that. Then I'm gonna take my ham, just break it up into small pieces and put it in the food processor. Really one of the main reasons I make a big ham is to make ham salad. We love it so much. I'm gonna make a ton and I'll definitely share it with my parents, but it's so easy with a food processor. We're just gonna put it all in here. We're gonna pulse it until it's well combined and then it's ready to eat. I just store it in the refrigerator, serve it on pork rinds, serve it on crackers, eat it with a spoon. It is just so delicious. I hope if you've never tried this, you will. It's so delicious and so easy, y'all. All right, y'all. So the next thing we're going to do is our ham casserole. I'm going to make it two ways. I am going to make one that is low carb and one that is made with hash browns. So I'm going to make them exactly the same way. What I did in here is just cream of mushroom. It's a gluten-free cream of mushroom, equal parts that and equal parts sour cream. I added in some French onion dip and I'm stirring that all around. This is definitely not a clean keto recipe. The ingredients are a little bit dirty but I absolutely love this casserole and when I have ham, it's something I crave. So I cooked in the microwave this rice and I did two bags, they're 12 ounces each, of just great value brand from Walmart, rice cauliflower, and I'm gonna stir this all together really, really well, and then we're gonna add some cheese. I add about a cup of cheese and about two cups of ham and stir it really well. We're gonna put it in a casserole dish and we're gonna to top it with more cheese. And then we're gonna do this exact same method, only using hash browns for the second casserole. I had some hash browns in the freezer. My kids really enjoy the hash brown casserole. And this way, I'll be able to eat on this cauliflower version all week. It tastes exactly the same. The flavors are exactly the same. It's just instead of the hash browns, I replaced it with cauliflower. This does have a few carbs from the gluten-free soup mixes, 
but very little still and it is a delicious every once in a while meal. I know I could make it a little bit cleaner, but we were still using up what we had in the pantry. So I'm putting them in a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes or so. And actually we, you'll see in a little bit that I ended up having to put the cauliflower one in longer. It needed more like 45 to 50 minutes. I should have cooked the cauliflower first in the microwave a little bit longer, but I didn't. But here's what they're looking like when they come out and they were delicious. My kids and my husband ate it up. I'm still working on this cauliflower one. Look how ooey gooey cheesy delicious this is y'all. Oh my goodness. I'm not feeling super well tonight and I feel like I look extremely pale, but I'm gonna taste this and see how it is. Mm. It's pretty good. I feel like the cauliflower is not cooked fully through. Um, I think I should have left it in longer. So I think I'm going to cover it with tin foil and put it back in. I did cook the cauliflower in the microwave for six minutes first. But maybe that wasn't quite long enough. The flavor is on point, but the cauliflower isn't. The flavor is on point, but the cauliflower is not quite soft enough. So I'm thinking it probably needed more like 45 minutes. So I'm just going to cover it and put it back in. But... I, the taste is on point. It's going to be really good once the cauliflower is a little softer. Okay, it is the next day, and I'm going to do a little bit of meal prep today and make a couple of dinners, actually. So the first thing I'm going to do is crack some eggs for an egg casserole. And y'all, look at this. These eggs are all double yoked. They were from a friend of a friend. What is going on with these chickens, y'all? Almost all of these extra large eggs seem to be double yolks. Anyways, they're beautiful. I mean, look at this yellow color, y'all. Oh my gosh. So I added some salsa and some spicy all-purpose, and I added about half of a cup of sausage. I'm just going to add some cheese to this as well, pour it in a casserole dish, cook it for about 30 minutes in a 350 degree oven and then I think I'm actually going to end up turning this into breakfast burritos with some bacon and some salsa and some cheese wrapping them up putting them in the freezer and there'll be a different version of breakfast for Jason and Jackson during the week I think that's what we're going to end up doing with this but for now we're just going to cook it as a casserole all right, the next thing we're going to do is make a huge batch of my keto crumbs. These are my bread crumb replacement. I use pork rinds, nutritional yeast, and Parmesan cheese. And this mixture is in my cookbook exactly if you want the recipe, but I just pulse it all together and then put it into Ziplocs and store it in the freezer. All right, so here's our bread crumb mixture. And to it, I'm going to add seasoning. We are going to add some oregano basically i'm just going to add italian seasoning i'm out of italian seasoning blend so i'm going to add some oregano some parsley some basil i'm using all spices from fresh jacks i'm going to add in some onion powder oh i just spilled that all over the place and some garlic powder i always like to season at every step so we're going to season this up. I know I look crazy. I just got back from yoga and took a shower and got my hair up in like a towel turban. So forgive me. But I forgot to tell y'all what we were having for dinner. So for dinner tonight, we are going to have monster cheese and mushroom chicken. This is my family's one of the top probably five things I make. Something they ask for for birthdays. It's ridiculously simple, but it's delicious. One of my high school good friends, mamas, made this and she taught me how to make it. And I have figured out how to low carb it by using my breadcrumbs. So we are gonna use these breadcrumbs and we're going to season some chicken. We're gonna fry it up. Then we're gonna put it in a casserole dish with some mushrooms and some cheese and bake it. It sounds like ridiculously too simple and like it's not going to be amazing but it's amazing so let's get to work normally what i would do with this is i would cut my chicken up into bite-sized pieces then i would dip it in an egg wash and dip then dip it into my breadcrumb mixture but i'm feeling a little little lazy so we're going to try to um shake it up a little bit today and go ahead and just cut our chicken into bite-sized pieces and then we're going to put the chicken into our bag of breadcrumbs our keto crumbs 
and let and just shake it up and see if it seasons it well enough i think it'll work and i just got it from yoga and i'm hungry and i want to get this meal going so this is the plan today i'm trying to make these pieces of chicken all about the same size and all bite size so that they cook pretty quickly we're going to take our breadcrumbs and we're going to take some of our chicken not all of it i'm probably going to do it in thirds and we're going to close it up and we're just going to shakey shake shake okay so i've got a clean plate here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my chicken and just dump it out all right so the next thing we're going to do is get them into a pan of hot avocado oil you could use any kind of fat that you would like to cook in you could use lard or bacon fat whatever works for you we're going to fill the pan up with this but you do not want to overcrowd if you overcrowd your pan you end up steaming your chicken and we want to brown it we want to brown it on both sides but we're not worried about cooking it through here because we are going to finish this in the oven so we're just going to finish this on this side flip it over do it on the other side so it took about three batches and then we're putting it into a casserole dish you probably want to spray this dish with some avocado oil spray or rub it down with some butter and then we are going to take our mushrooms you're going to get canned mushrooms not fresh and this is important for this dish canned mushrooms with stems and then we're going to pour the entire can over top the chicken including the juice I know it sounds kind of off, it sounds kind of weird, it sounds like how is this one of your family's favorite meals, but y'all, there's just magic here. Somehow this just comes together. We really, really like the juicy bit of it, so I used two whole cans. The original recipe was just one large can, but I used two, so I covered this very, very well. And then the cheese of choice for this is Munster cheese. That really matters as well if you don't like Munster I guess you could try it with something else but it just makes this dish so I buy sliced Munster cheese and then I cover the entire casserole very very well with Munster cheese and then you're going to bake it just until it's cooked through the chicken is almost cooked through so I usually put this in for about 20 to 25 minutes at 350 degrees take it out let it cool and then serve it with a side of any veggie of your choice this is definitely in my family's top three to five meals that I make. It's so comforting. It's so delicious. Just trust me, y'all are going to love this if you try it. Here it is out of the oven. My kids are standing around salivating, waiting for me to give it to them. This truly is one of their very, very favorite dishes. It is so good. I serve it with rice for them usually and a side of broccoli or something like that. This freezes well. I often make multiple batches of this. The chicken by itself is another thing to make in bulk and freeze. It freezes really, really well and reheats really, really well as nuggets or in casseroles like this. You will love it. I'm gonna taste this for y'all and let you know how it came making it this method, which was really not very different. Mm, so good. This dish really takes me back to my childhood. This was like my favorite thing to have when I went to my friend's house to spend the night. I think her mom probably made this for me almost every time I went over because she knew I loved it. And then when I was old enough, she taught me how to make it. And then my mom and dad started making it I make it for my kids. It's a winner, y'all. You need to try it. So for dinner on this night, I'm going to make a meal that looks really fancy, but is super simple and is in one pot. It's one pot chicken with sun-dried tomatoes and onions and a white wine sauce. We're actually going to use chicken broth instead tonight. And what you want to get is your chicken all the same size, all of the pieces about the same size and pretty thin so that they'll cook at the same speed and pretty quickly. And then I took half of a cup of almond flour and half of a cup of my keto crumbs then I put some Italian seasoning in about a tablespoon or so and then I'm going to use the same shake method we used yesterday I'm just going to shake them really well until they're very well coated so just shake a shake a shake shake and bake that stuff y'all I love this method and then we're going to put it down in whatever oil you choose bacon fat would be really really great for the overall recipe or the overall taste of this recipe so you're going to put it in very hot oil and you want to make sure not to overcrowd 
overcrowd your pan. Remember we talked about how overcrowding your pan means things are going to steam rather than crisp up and we really want to get a really nice crisp. And I like to use this huge pan so that I can get five good sized pieces in at a time. So I'm going to let these brown on this side and then we will flip them to the other side, let them brown on the other side. And again, this does not have to cook through all the way, just like the chicken from yesterday's meal. We're just going to get it brown on both sides and then set it to a plate and go ahead and build our sauce. So we're going to go ahead and cut up an onion. I did this pretty thinly. You could do slices or you could dice it if you want. I just did thin slices. And then we're also going to put that into the pan after I had taken the chicken out and let it go over probably about a medium low and we don't want it to fry we just want it to get translucent Next to this we're actually going to add a little bit of bacon. I had some cold bacon that I had left over from earlier in the week and I just diced it up really small and added it. Again, we're just doing layers of flavor, layers of flavor. So this cold bacon had quite a bit of fat on it. So I'm going to let this render down. We're over a medium low here. And again, just a few minutes the onions are still getting tender and then we're going to go chop up our sun-dried tomatoes sun-dried tomatoes do have a good bit of carbs because they're dried tomatoes and tomatoes have some sugar naturally these are just in an olive oil so we're going to take a couple tablespoons and dice them really really small so the flavor of this is going to get all throughout our dish but we're not actually using very much and we're going to take a little bit of that oil and put it in the pan as well and that will lend so much flavor we're building layers on top of layers in this recipe and it is just divine but like a 30 minute meal I absolutely love making this meal it is delicious you are gonna love it all right, next we're going to just put a little bit of that oil from the sun-dried tomatoes in there like I had said and get that turned around the pan. And then we're going to sprinkle in about a tablespoon of Trim Healthy Mama Baking Blend. That's what I use tonight, but you could use almond flour if you wanted. We're just kind of getting a little bit of a layer to the sauce that's going to thicken it up a little bit. You could totally skip this and then later at the end add xanthan gum. If you wanted to do that, that's totally fine too. So I'm going to stir this around and let it cook out so that it doesn't have that raw flavor of flour. We'll do that for a couple of minutes and then we are going to add in the lemon juice. So here I am adding in about two tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm going to stir that around the pan. If I was using white wine, I would use white wine here and use about a fourth a cup of white wine is usually what I would do. But instead, we use lemon juice in its place. And then after the lemon juice cooks out just a little bit, I'm actually going to add some cream cheese. The cream cheese is also going to help thicken it. I'm literally just doing one tablespoon here, but you could do up to two to three tablespoons if you wish. Again, you're just going to cook this, stir it until it all melts down really, really nicely. And then we are going to build the next layer in the sauce, and that is just going to be some chicken broth. I'm going to do about half a cup to a cup of chicken broth. I think I ended up closer to a cup. Got that all mixed really, really well. And then once this is all mixed and everything is distributed well, we are going to let it cook down by almost half. So I'm turning that volume up and I'm going to get this to where it is simmering and let that thicken up some. Once it's simmering like this, I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit more flavor. I just tasted it and it seemed like it needed another layer. So I put in a tablespoon of Italian seasoning and a little bit of garlic powder. And you could actually add whole garlic at this point or diced up garlic, but I just did a little bit of garlic powder. And I am actually going to add in a little bit of heavy cream at I'm putting in about a fourth a cup of heavy cream here. You could skip this, but I just think it lays or adds a layer of richness. And I'm going to get that stirred up. And then I'm going to put it down to a low, very low heat and add my chicken back in. When I put my chicken back in, I'm going to make sure that every single piece is covered by the sauce. And I also put any juices that had come off of the chicken. So I get the chicken all covered really, really well with the sauce. And then we're just going to place the top on it 
have it on low and let it simmer until the chicken is completely cooked through. It's really only going to take three to five minutes. It's basically almost cooked. Again, I used really thin chicken here and that's what lends this to happening in about 30 minutes total. If you use thicker chicken, it would just take a little bit longer. But again, put that top on and just let it simmer on low until the chicken's done and you're going to have delicious tender chicken. Serving this to my family over white rice, I'll skip the rice and put it over some cauliflower rice or eat it alone but this sauce is so good so this was one of those nights that i actually made two dinners in one night but we'll eat it over the next few days but here is the sun-dried tomato and chicken meal and i just put rice on my fork which i didn't mean to do i just wanted to get the the chicken and the sauce well it leaves all down my chin it's super professional you still there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so good though, y'all. It was really good. It definitely would be better with some white wine, but the lemon juice is really good too. The sun dried tomatoes are so good, and the chicken is super, super tender. I've got Caroline come in with her fingers where y'all can't see her. Oh, Grab it on this chicken and mushroom. I'm telling you, it's their favorite. All right. We're going to go and eat, but first, I'm going to let Caroline show you what she made today because mm. she's super proud of it, and I totally had one, and they're freaking delicious. Okay, so I don't cook, but I do bake, and she doesn't bake, so it works out. So today, <laughs> I made cookies, and you know, these look like normal cookies. Here, let me get a good one. They're all good. They're so They cool. look like normal cookies, right? But, surprise, they have a brownie inside of them. <laughs> They're so good. I don't know. It's not focusing I'm... on the cookie, but <laughs> yeah. There we go. They're so good. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, so I made these. And they're really easy to make, and they're not keto. No. Uh, so but they're delicious. We won't give you the Although the, 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 the brownie part is flourless. It is flourless. But it's not sugarless. It has um, one cup and three and one third cups of sugar. But uh, you could totally, we could totally but you like, could switch it out switch it out to allulose or something. Yeah. I mean, you could make this without, I, I don't You could know. take this idea and make a keto cookie. Yeah. But. I don't bake keto because I don't like keto. She, she never does keto baking I for me. baking keto. It doesn't taste good. I think she's wrong. All right. That's what's for dinner this week, y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas or something that you'd like to try, or at least some encouragement to get in the kitchen and make meals, delicious, nutritious meals from home. Go over to Janet's channel, give her some love, tell her Erica sent you, and I will see y'all again soon. Bye y'all, be blessed.